चेक चेक ऑडिबल यस प्लीज कंफर्म और ग्रेट राइट गुड इवनिंग क्लास राइट आई थिंक वेलकम टू द मैपिंग सेशंस फॉर नेक्स्ट थ्री डेज आई जस्ट पुट अ कॉन्टेक्स टू दिस एंड विल डायरेक्टली गेट इन टू अवर बिजनेस uh the fundamental reason for conducting these mapping sessions was for some reasons you see the boards of be it your upsc or be it with respect to your state public service commissions they started taking interest with respect to the locations of countries right but don't expect them to post you there right definitely now in that context what you have to understand is at least we need basic awareness regarding where is what it was sometimes when i ask about afghanistan you put it in australia right that is what is one basic problem that i could see across number of students so in order to bring in and in order to initiate that aspects of awareness and exam oriented dimension we thought why not conduct these sessions for 3 days right now how would these sessions go to a larger extent is when i'm teaching you some mapping dimension first i would give you the static dimension of it and i would not teach you whole of the static dimension suppose if i am going to teach you about different cyclones and what are their names i would give you those prerequisite conditions for cyclones and if i have to understand if i have to teach you some dimensions probably i would just run through them then we'll get into the mapping part of it right so this is how it is going to be i don't want to just make it factual i don't want to just make it static and random we would see that every aspect and every slide of today's session we would fundamentally have a static dimension being covered to it right so that is what is the context that we are going to set for these sessions and the respective slides that are displayed here and the kind of mnemonic that we are going to do all of those will be shared in the corresponding groups right hope you have joined those right if you didn't i'll share the telegram link towards the end and you can join them okay i think let's get into our business initially we see that we are going to start off with the basic dimensions that is your latitudes and longitudes and when you look at these latitudes and longitudes we would just see that in the context of longitudes the only purpose of understanding any longitude is the time zonations and in that context we see that around 24 time zones are fundamentally seen in the context of the world and one factual base that you need to remember in this context is france is the country which has highest number of time zones france is the country which has the highest number of time zones which are existing now once you understand this basic dimension now you would also see there is one special kind of longitude that is seen which is considered to be more of an imaginary line that is your international date line and when you observe this international date line you see that this is a imaginary line which is going to separate two different regions and the speciality of this particular region is there is no change in time there is no change in time just the date changes just the date changes and we see that when we have to understand where is this international date line going to pass through we see that it is fundamentally going to pass through your pacific ocean and we see it steering through something called as aleutian islands we see it steering through something called as aleutian islands and it also passes through something called as bering sea it also passes something through called as bering sea or aleutian islands so that is one small dimension that you need to understand in the context of longitudes when you look at latitudes you see that most of your geography that is to be learnt in the context of concept or static dimension is fundamentally driven by your latitudes and when you get to understand this latitude you see that we have certain special kind of latitudes which are demarcated in the context and depending upon the latitudinal position we see there is temperature zonation of the earth which is fundamentally seen and where we call this as torrid region where this is what is temperate region and where this is frigid region now keeping that in mind we see that all of these are fundamentally in reference to a point called equator right now here what we have to understand we see that we have something called as tropic of cancer we have something called as tropic of capricorn and whenever we study geography we fundamentally look into geocentric studies 
And when we are looking into geocentric studies, we always see the restricted movement of the sun happening from equator to tropic of Cancer, again to equator, again to tropic of Capricorn. When sun is over equator, that position is what is called as equinox condition. And when sun is over tropic, that is tropic of Cancer and tropic of Capricorn, that is solstice. Right? This is what is one basic dimension that you need to understand. And when we look at in the context of India, when we try to extrapolate these concepts to India, we see that we have something called as Indian Standard Time. And we see that it is considered at 82.5 degrees east. And one more dimension that you need to understand in the context of India is it passes, I mean, you see, Tropic of Cancer passing through India. One basic understanding. Now, with that, you see, we have roughly around 13 countries passing through equator. And in that context, we see Maldives, Maldives, Indonesia, Somalia, South Home, Kiribati, Gabon, Republic of Congo, Colombia, Brazil, Ecuador, Uganda, Kenya, and DRC, that is. Now, if you want to remember this, Right? This is one small mnemonic that if you want to remember, no sir, it is becoming very tough. Then, you arrange it. The initial ones is what? Miss, right? Miss, KGR, right? Miss, KGR, right? Now, one small mnemonic that we could remember is ECB, GC, Dutch, Mike. Right, ECB, GC, Dux, Mike, that is one small mnemonic at least which I remember. Right, apart from that, if you want to do something, me creativity, me kala portion, me system, you can show that. Okay. So, that is one dimension and one more small thing that I would tell you. Whenever you would want to remember these countries, I would say go continent approach. Now, ECB, GC, Dux and Mike, that is a continental approach. This is all what? Africa, this is all what? South American region, this is all what? Asia. This is all Asia, right? That is one small approach that you can go. At least whenever you are looking at this latitudinal dimension, it is easy if you remember according to the continent. Okay. Next. Oh, don't worry, don't struggle too much. This will be shade. Right? This will be shade. That doesn't mean that without attending these sessions, these will be available to you. They will be available to you. But you will not know what is the context behind each of this. That's the only thing. Okay. Next. This is with respect to topic of Cancer or Capricorn. Babu, Australia on the air. When we have Australia, it is what? Capricorn. Okay. Baba PM. Works in MNC. Baba PM works in MNC, right? Or if you want something, right? PM is a Baba who was working in who was working in not as Chaiwala but MNC, right? These are different countries with respect to what? Tropic of Capricorn. Tropic of Capricorn, right? Now, why am I discussing these dimensions? Sometimes your state public service commissions and sometimes UPSC will feel like asking these, right? Okay, next. Ah, this is with respect to the topic of cancer. Now, here just remember that in the context of topic of cancer, it is difficult for us to remember number of countries because there are more. Now, this may just remember Asian countries. Now, when you remember Asian countries, if at all any examiner is trying to play upon the countries with respect to Tropic of Cancer, the area of playing is going to be in Asia. Now, that is what? India is there, right? Saudi, China, UAE, Taiwan, Bangladesh, Oman, Myanmar, right? So, that means...
right? You have biscuit. Which companies? More companies. More biscuits. Right? More biscuits. No, sir. You want to make a little more central say. Mom's biscuit. We have no mom's magic in biscuit. Right? So what is this M? Negligible. What is this I? Negligible. Right? Remember that. Now don't break your head in searching for M and don't create your own country. Right? Be very careful with that. Now what is the mnemonic for this? Mom's biscuit. Mom's biscuit is the mnemonic and in that M is for our convenience and I is for our convenience. Right? That is what is one basic thing that you need to understand here. Okay. Next. Now we come to India. Now in the context of India, we have we were just seeing that tropic of cancer passes through India. And when we look at this, starting from this side, we see Mizoram, Tripura, West Bengal, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh. Rajasthan is little skeptical because only a small area of this is there. Only a small area of this is there. So you will have to be really careful in that context and you will have to understand that it passes through Rajasthan as well then Gujarat. So how many states? Eight. How many states? Eight. Again, Mizoram, Tripura, West Bengal, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Gujarat. Right? So that is one thing that you need to understand here. The only point of confusion here is Rajasthan. If you just remember, Rajasthan is there with respect to Tropic of Cancer states. You can manage that. Okay. Next. Now coming to longitudinal position. Especially in the context of VC longitudinal position, we have something called as prime meridian. We have something called as prime meridian. And what is our fundamental aspect? We see in a longitude for every one degree, there is a variation of four minutes. For example, last year, group one prelims, they had asked this particular calculations. Now, for every 7.5 degrees, there is a variation of 30 minutes. And for every 15 degrees, there is a variation of one hour. And we know that whenever we are moving towards east, we are going to add and we are going to gain. And whenever we are moving west, we are going to subtract and we are losing. We are losing. So this is what is one small dimension that you need to understand when you talk about your calculations of time. Now look at those countries which are passing through. It is starting with UK. Right? You need to understand. Then France, Spain, Algeria. Mali, Burkani Faso, Togo, and Ghana. I'm repeating UK, France, Spain, Algeria, Mali, Burkani Faso, Togo, and Ghana. Right? So these are how many countries? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 countries. Right? Through eight countries, you have this prime meridian passing through. Through eight countries, we have this prime meridian passing through. Next. We know that it also passes through India. I mean, we have one reference point. Now here, when you look at this reference point, we see that it is passing through five states. It is passing through what? Starting with UP, then Madhya Pradesh, then Chhattisgarh, then Odisha, then Andhra Pradesh. Now, just remember, there is going to be one point of confusion in this context of passing of this meridian dimension. Now, one point of confusion that you will have to remember is there is no Jharkhand. There is no Jharkhand. And you also remember there is no Tamil Nadu. Because when you look at this particular Indian standard timeline that 82.5 degrees, you see it is going to pass through Kakinada region, which is a coastal region. And then Tarvata, if you want to access it, you will have to jump into Bay of Bengal. Right? So, it is a different issue. Okay. So, you fundamentally have to understand there is no Tamil Nadu, there is no Jharkhand. And Baki Kato, Kitna states? Five. Right? We have five states in that. Okay. Now, with that basic understanding, the next aspect that you see is with respect to cyclones. Right? Now, when we look at cyclones, we see that. Whenever we are talking about cyclones, we see three conditions that are going to exist in the context of cyclones. One is certain conditions for origin of cyclones, certain conditions for spread of cyclones, certain conditions for death of cyclones. 
and when you look at this origin of cyclones you will have to understand there are certain prerequisite conditions which are existing and one is the sea surface temperature is greater than 27 degrees there has to be coriolis force which is to be present for a cyclone to exist and you also need a low pressure condition to be existing there and we also see there has to be a moisture source there has to be a moisture source for a cyclone to originate so for any cyclone to originate i need these four conditions at any cost and the reason why we don't have cyclones at the equator is at the equator we see the coriolis force is zero the coriolis force is zero because you have to understand what is happening is when i move from equator towards poles i see that number of conditions are going to vary number of conditions are going to vary one condition that i see is radius of the earth keeps decreasing the gravity of the earth keeps increasing the coriolis force of the earth keeps increasing the speed of rotation decreases or increases decreases or increases decreases right we also see temperature decreasing biodiversity what is happening to biodiversity decreases decreases that means when i move from equator towards poles i see that number of variations are fundamentally seen in this context and is as part of that i see coriolis force is also varying and i see that at the equator the coriolis force is almost zero because of which i don't find any cyclones to be present at the equatorial region right now once i understand that when i look at the spread of the cyclone i see that in the context of a cyclone i generally have two conditions one is the cyclone i and the other one is cyclone wall now when i look at the cyclone i i see that it is a low pressure condition it is a low pressure condition it is not only a low pressure condition it is a calm region which is existing and when you try to understand what is the characteristic feature of this cyclone i you see that there is no rainfall there is no rainfall there is no wind system which is existing and also it is completely calm but whereas when you move from cyclone i to the cyclone wall you get to understand that the cyclone gets more destructive with the conditions of the speed of the wind increases the amount of the rainfall increases this is what is one condition that you need to understand whenever you are talking about as you are moving from cyclone i to cyclone wall right that is one condition now when you look at the death of the cyclone one particular condition where you find death of the cyclone we say there is something called as landfall of a cyclone there is something called as landfall of a cyclone and when you talk about this landfall of a cyclone you understand that it simply means that the moisture source is cut off the moisture source is cut off and when this moisture source is cut off we call landfall of a cyclone and recently i think somewhere in 2021 we had one particular kind of cyclone called as bomb cyclone and when you talk about this bomb cyclone the fundamental understanding about bomb cyclone is you see when i see a variation of or a pressure drop of 24 mm per hg in one day when i see a pressure variation when i see a pressure condition variation of 24 mm per hg for one day i see a condition of bomb cyclone which is existing on the fundamental characteristic of a bomb cyclone it is highly explosive in nature it is highly explosive in nature it is highly destructive in nature it is having exorbitant speed of winds that is to be seen in this context right so this is one basic understanding that you need to have then apart from that you also have to see that cyclones are generally of two types one is the tropical cyclone the other one is the temperate cyclone and when you get to understand this basic difference of tropical cyclones and temperate cyclones what do you commonly see these occur only on sea whereas your temperate cyclones they occur on sea as well as land and you see that these are more destructive in nature these are less destructive in nature i see that these are majorly convective in nature but whereas these are frontogenesis these are frontogenesis that means fronts are the reason for the fundamental formation of cyclones in the context of temperate region because i know that when i talk about a front i see that front is a transitionary phenomena which is existing in the context of the temperate region and i also find out that front is nothing but an intermixture of two different winds which are warm and cold and in that context i see that there is something called as frontogenesis which is occurring in this context right so that is one dimension that you need to understand now with that basic thing i see that cyclones are named differently in different regions i call them as hurricanes i call them as hurricanes in one particular region that is your usa and mexico right i call them as typhoon somewhere in chinese region right i call them as typhoon i call them as cyclones in the indian ocean and i call them as willy willy somewhere in the regions of australia right you can keep that in a tabular format that would be easy you can keep that in a tabular format 
near usa we have something called as hurricanes near china region typhoons then in the context of indian ocean region cyclones and in the context of australian region we have willy willy right that is what is one small thing and one more small peculiar trend that we see in the context of indian cyclones we see that the frequency of cyclones in the arabian sea has been increasing for example biparjoy biparjoy is a kind of cyclone which was existing in arabian sea and generally what is the condition in the context of indian cyclones is we see that the cyclones in bay of bengal are generally more than the cyclones in arabian sea cyclones in bay of bengal are generally more than the cyclones in arabian sea and the reason why we have this peculiar trend of the frequency of cyclones increasing in arabian sea is to a larger extent because of something called as positive indian ocean dipole we have something called as positive indian ocean dipole and not only a condition of positive indian ocean dipole but it is also a condition of el nino it is also a condition of el nino right so this is what is one basic dimension that you need to understand next when you look at world climates when we look at world climates we see that in the context of world climates fundamental variations that you see with respect to world climates is one is the temperature the other one is the precipitation the other one is which form of wind which form of wind is fundamentally influencing because we know that in the context of the wind systems we have something called as primary systems as well as secondary systems and to a larger extent we see primary systems are ubiquitous in nature they are universal they are permanent in nature and in that context what you see when you talk about these ubiquitous systems or when you talk about your primary systems those primary systems are what tropical easterlies westerlies and polar easterlies and you know the tropical easterlies are also called as trade winds that is what is one fundamental dimension that you need to understand in the context of classification of winds and depending upon the influence of which kind of wind and not only the type of the wind but also see the precipitation but also with respect to the temperature you see that there is going to be a kind of world climate which is going to be determined and if i have to talk about some generalization in the context of the world climates what do i observe i see that if i try to balance something called as per evapotranspiration what do you mean by per evapotranspiration it simply means evaporation plus transpiration i know that evaporation is from the land surface and transpiration is from the leaf surfaces now when i try to balance these conditions with precipitation i will be able to come to a generalization about what is going to be the nature of the climate that is going to exist in that particular region now when i try to understand these dimensions i see that i can have three different conditions where the per evapotranspiration is less than precipitation the per evapotranspiration is almost equal to precipitation and the per evapotranspiration is much much greater than precipitation whenever i see a condition where the per evapotranspiration is less than precipitation that means precipitation dominating the evaporation i see a condition of evergreen or i see a condition of equatorial region when i look at this condition where i see that the per evapotranspiration is almost equivalent to that of precipitation that means when i see a condition where both are almost very similar i see a condition of grasslands i see a grassland condition and when i look at this grassland condition i know that there can be two different kinds of grassland conditions which can exist one is temperate grasslands the other one is tropical grasslands and when i look at this third condition where the per evapotranspiration is much much greater than precipitation then i see the condition of deserts prevailing then i see the condition of deserts prevailing to a larger extent so when i look at this condition i observe when i look at this condition i observe that i am able to arrive at a generalization which will enable me to understand what is the world climate depending upon the wind system depending upon the precipitation depending upon the nature of the wind system which are influencing that particular climate now with that basic understanding what do you observe you see you have something called as different grasslands which are named at different places when you look at these different grasslands which are named at different places we see something called as temperate grasslands and tropical grasslands which are existing and when i get to understand this temperate grasslands and tropical grasslands the fundamental difference that i would see in the context of temperate grasslands and tropical grasslands is i see the tropical grasslands and temperate grasslands one morphological difference that i generally find out between both of them these are tall the temp the tropical grasslands are tall they are not only tall they are wiry in nature and they are not only wiry in nature these are non nutritious in nature these are non nutritious in nature that is what is one condition when i see in the context of the tropical grasslands and i also see 
one particular activity that is seen in the context of tropical grasslands is big game hunting. I find an activity of big game hunting to be seen in the context of tropical grasslands. When I look at the temperate grasslands, I see that these temperate grasslands are, they are almost complete grasslands because in the context of tropical grasslands, at least I see some minimal presence of trees. But whereas in the context of temperate grasslands, I don't see any presence of trees. So one condition is with respect to it is a treeless ecosystem which is existing. And I see that it is more of a complete grassland which is present there. When I look at the second condition in the context of temperate grasslands, I see that ranching as an activity is practiced here. And I also see these are what are called as the granaries of the world. The, these are what are called as the granaries of the world. The reason why they are called as the granaries of the world because you find a favorable condition that is existing for clearance of these grasslands and going for the cultivation of the wheat. And in that context, you call them as the granaries of the world, right? That is one condition that you see in the context of temperate grasslands, right? So this is what is one categorical difference that you see. And one peculiar characteristic feature in the context of temperate grasslands, you see that the temperate grasslands among the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, it is going to be different. It is not going to be same. It is going to be different. And when you get to understand what is the fundamental difference that is existing between your northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, you would see that in the northern hemisphere, I see extreme kind of climatic conditions existing in the context of temperate grasslands. But whereas in the context of southern hemisphere, I see there is a moderate climatic condition which is existing. And when I talk about this difference between extreme climatic conditions and moderate climatic conditions with respect to temperate grasslands, when I find out what is the reason, I see that in the context of the northern hemisphere, why do I find extreme context of climatic conditions? It is fundamentally because of a concept of continentality. And what do you simply understand by continentality? You observe continentality is nothing but the extreme nature of the temperatures which are seen in the interiors of the continent because of the absence of the moderation of what? Sea breeze and land breeze. Right? Good evening. Right? Impact. Intensity. Yes or no? Yes? Are you all with me? How is the Josh? How is the Josh? Very good. Right? Now, with that basic understanding, let's see. They are named differently. Lanos. Lanos are tropical. Right? And another very similar to Lanos, we have something called as Campos. Lanos and Campos. And we also have savannas. We also have savannas. All of these are what? All of these are temperate grasslands. All of these are temperate grasslands. Now, when you look at, sorry, all of these are tropical grasslands. Sorry, all of these are tropical grasslands. When you talk about the temperate grasslands, we see that in the North America, they are named as prairies. In Russian region, they are named as steppes. In the Australian region, they are named as Downs. In the South African region, they are named as Wells. They are named as Wells. In the New Zealand region, they are named as Canterbury. Canterbury, not Cadbury. Canterbury, right? That is, and when you look at Hungary region, when you look at Hungary region, these are named as Pustas. These are named as Pustas in the Hungary region. These are named as Canterbury in New Zealand region, these are named as Downs in Australia, Prairies in North America, Steppes in Russia and Wells in South American region, right? And in China, your Gobi Manchuria, Manchurian, right? Manchurian grasslands, right? Ah, Chinese fast food names will be there, right? So that is one thing that you need to understand in this context, okay? So this is one small understanding here. Now, next we have deserts. I was telling you that three conditions were existing in the context of world climates. I have seen that. This condition I will teach you on the third day. When I am dealing with forest, when I am dealing with vegetation, when I am dealing with morphological changes and when I am dealing with the distribution of the forest along with Indian State of Forest Report 2021. Because Indian State of Forest Report 2023 is still awaited, we don't know. But Indian State of Forest Report 2021 and the distribution of mangroves in all of those conditions, I will teach you the first condition. I just spoke about the second condition in the context of grasslands. Now I will speak about the third condition that is with respect to your desert formations. And when you look at this condition, what do you see? You see that when the per evapotranspiration is much, much greater than precipitation, that means 
I don't find any sort of moisture that is existing in a particular region. When I don't find any sort of moisture that is existing in a particular region, then I see a condition of what? Desert condition. Then I see a condition of desert condition. And one particular aspect of such a phenomena where I see that the evaporation is much, much greater than precipitation, I fundamentally find something called as salinization of soil. I fundamentally find something called as salinization of soil. That means when I look at most of my desert soils, I see that most of my desert soils are saline conditions. They are alkaline in nature. They are saline in nature because of what? Because of the capillary action that is seen with respect to the soils which are being brought down from the subsoil structures. Now, with that basic understanding of this, we see that when we talk about desert formations, we see that there are five different prerequisite conditions or five different conditions in which you can have a desert. And when you get to understand these five different conditions where you can have a desert, the first condition that you see is because of the cold currents. You see because of the cold currents, for example, when you talk about your Peruvian current which is resulting in Atacama Desert, when you talk about Venezuela current which is resulting in Namib Desert, right? these are fundamentally cold currents which are resulting in the formation of deserts. The second condition that you see here for a desert formation is it has to be subtropical high pressure region. And when you look at the subtropical high pressure region, we see that the reason for the formation of deserts in the subtropical region or the subtropical high pressure region is these regions are classified to be cloudless in nature. As these regions are classified to be cloudless in nature, what do we fundamentally observe? When we see a condition of cloudlessness, condition that is what is happening, we see the reflective capacity of a particular surface is going to be reducing and we see there is a lot of incident radiation. When we have a lot of incident radiation, we have a lot of evapotranspiration which is resulting in what? A desert-like condition. For example, Gobi Desert. Gobi Desert is a desert which is fundamentally present with respect to your subtropical high pressure belt. The third reason why we see the desert formation generally happens is in the context of rain shadow region. In the context of rain shadow region, we know that whenever we are talking about a orographic kind of rainfall, what happens is we see that all of the air mass is fundamentally going to precipitate the moisture on one side. And that is what is called as windward side or that is what is called as rain bearing region. And we see that the dry air mass is going to move down. And this particular region is what is called as leeward side or this is what is called as the rain shadow region. And we see number of deserts being formed because of the rain shadow region. For example, Thar Desert. Or for example, Patagonian Desert, which is a resultant of rain shadow region because of the Patagonian mountains that are present in the South American region. The third reason that we, or the fourth reason that we see because of the, or for what reasons we have this desert formation is because of continentality. Is because of continentality. And we see continentality is all about what continentality is a condition where I see the extreme, con extreme temperature conditions to be prevalent in a particular region, especially in the interiors of the region because of the absence of the moderating phenomena because of the sea breeze and the land breeze. And we know that the sea breeze and land breeze is fundamentally having a principle of moderation. And we see the sea breeze and land breeze is resultant of the difference in the specific heat because of the variation of the specific heat with respect to land as well as sea. And we know that the specific heat of land is much less than the specific heat of Water and that is the reason why we find during the days we experience what kind of breeze, sea breeze or land breeze? During days, sea breeze, beautiful, right? Continentality. And the last condition that we see in the context of desert formation is offshore winds. Offshore winds. We know that onshore winds brings in moisture. And in the context of the tropical region, the onshore winds are going to bring in moisture towards the eastern side. But whereas on the western side, we find there is offshore winds. Offshore winds fundamentally take away the moisture. Because of the impact of the offshore winds, we fundamentally find the most of the deserts are seen to be on the western side of the continent. Most of the deserts are seen to be on the western side of the continent, right? So with this basic understanding, let's look at some different names for of deserts that are spread across different parts of the world. We know we have Gobi, Takalmakan. Right, Karakum, Kizilkum. Right, these are the deserts which are present in Asian region. And we also see Thar is definitely there. Thar is definitely there. So it is included here. Arabian desert, definitely there. Right, then Saharan desert and Namib desert. I was telling you about one particular cold current. We see one particular cold current moving like this, which is a band of west wind drift. And this is what is called as Venezuela current. And this Venezuela current is a cold current. So that is resulting in that. Then Kalahari Desert, Patagonian Desert, which is a desert resultant of rain shadow region. Some speculations are also there with respect to that as we find one oceanic current which is emerging here, which is called as West Wind Drift, we see this splits into two different branches. One is Peruvian current, the other one is 
Falkland current. Sometimes it is also speculated because of the presence of the Falkland current, which is a cold current, might result in the formation of Patagonian desert. But most of the times we see the reason for the formation of Patagonian desert is because of the Patagonian mountains which are present here. The other one is we see Atacama desert. Atacama desert happens to be the driest desert. It happens to be the driest desert. Then when we look at the Northern American region, we have Mojave, we have Sonoran. Most of the times you see Mojave is a desert which is resultant because of the California current. We see that California current is what? It is a cold current or warm current? Obviously, it is resulting in desert formation means what, my dear? It has to be cold current. California current is a cold current. Alaskan current? Ah, warm jappandi, mandi cold jappandi. Andalu edo katne It's a warm current. Alaskan current is a warm current and California current is a cold current. And in that context, what do you observe? You see that because of this cold current, it results in the formation of Mojave Desert, right? Then Great Basin, then Colorado Plateau. And here you also need to understand that deserts need not be in hot deserts. Deserts also mean cold deserts. And in the context of cold deserts, we see the fundamental reason why are we calling it as a desert is because of the mere absence of moisture. Mere absence of moisture. And in this context, what do we understand? We say that there is one peculiar current kind of condition which is existing in the context of cold desert that is a condition of permafrost. Permafrost fundamentally means frozen soil and we see what kind of vegetations that we generally see in the context of cold desert it is either mosses or ferns or rhododendrons right or lichens. So these are some of the kinds of vegetation that are seen in the context of your cold deserts right and in the context of India do we have cold deserts? Yes or no? Yes obviously. Leh, Ladakh, Lake Ladakh definitely are cold deserts and also Spiti Valley. Spiti Valley, where is Spiti Valley? Himachal Pradesh. Spiti Valley, Lake Ladakh are cold deserts which are present in India. And what is the normal desert that is present in India? Thar. Thar, right? Do we have any other desert apart from Thar? Don't say Ashoknagar. Right? Ashoknagar, I understand. Ashoknagar, Lona, the Adarigad, Karu. And where? Right? Ah. So you see the same thing again, different desert. You can please have a reference. And this variation is with respect to aridity and semi aridity condition. Right? Next. Now we are into our favorite part seas. Seas, right? That dimension was climatology. This dimension we are entering into is oceanography. Oceanography, we learn some dimensions. Tomorrow, majorly, it is going to be physiography. Tomorrow, it is majorly going to be physiography. We are going to look at different places. And we are going to look, look at different plateaus, plateau structures, different mountain structures, different volcano structures. All of those dimensions, different passes in the context of India. We have different passes. Right? Lipulek Pass, Nithila, Natula, right? Bumla, Bomdila. Nothing related to La in Ashoknagar, please. No relation, right? These are all passes. These are all passes. Okay. All of these are different passes that are existing. Okay. Now let's see. Black Sea. What Chacha chal rahe yaar? Chacha nahi. Ladai chal rahe iske upar. Right? Ah. What is the specialty of Black Sea? Ah. More than landlock, don't you think it is one of the fundamental sources of your oil? Yes or no? Ah, then, right? Which all countries are there? Sea burger, right? I don't have any copyrights over this mnemonic. Okay, universal mnemonic, right? Why do you want to think? When I have mnemonic which is already available and simple, why should I think? Ante kada? Aala sele delicate mind. Yende kala chistu, right? Ah. T burger, T is what? Turkey. B is Belgium or Bulgaria? Bulgaria. Then R. Two R's are there. One R is Russia. The other R is Romania. The other G. Georgia or Germany? Pakka. Ah, it is Georgia. Right? Then we have one more C here. It is C of Azov. C of Azov. What is the C of Azov? Sea of Azov, it is between whom? Russia and 
मैं लड़ाई किसके ऊपर चल रहे हाँ वही बस वेन ऐसे रशिया यू से यूक्रेन हाँ बस <laughs> जोर से बोलना चाहिए राइट वेन ऐसे रशिया हाँ वो दो रिलैक्स वेरी गुड ओके सो दैट इज सी ऑफ अस ऑफ द नेक्स्ट वन इज बी सी कैस्पियन सी और इस कैस्पियन सी तारिक तारिक टी इज वॉट तर्कमेनिस्तान अजरबैजान रशिया ईरान कजकिस्तान तर्कमेनिस्तान अजरबैजान रशिया ईरान एन कजकिस्तान now here i see that one particular thing that you need to understand here tomorrow we are going to discuss about one particular area called as nagorno karabakh we are going to discuss about one particular area is called as nagorno karabakh and what do you see banje banje we are going to see about nagorno karabakh and we see this nagorno karabakh is a region between azerbaijan and armenia that is a region of conflict that has been going on and you also have to understand that armenia is a landlocked country it doesn't have any coastal boundary armenia is a landlocked country right that is what is one small dimension that you need to understand in this which we'll cover tomorrow tomorrow we'll mostly see places in news on the third day we will look into vegetation on the third day we will look into mangroves and also we would look into some aspects of environment to a larger extent your biosphere reserve some of the important national parks some tiger reserves that we will do on the third day right ah uh. क्लाइमैक्स बाउंड कदे कदा चले बाले बाबू फैन में नेक्स्ट बाल्टिक सी अब बाल्टिक सी यू सी द निमोनिक दट इज ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग इज रूड जर्मनी सेल पोलैंड एंड फिनलैंड all due credits to the person who has made this mnemonics right because i should not have copyright issues wo to hai right root germany sel poland and finland are you russia de denmark ha ah, ge are germany unda ya pondana ha germany then sel s what is this there सुडा सुडा इकड़े स्वीडन ब्यूटिफुल स्वीडन इस्टोनिया एस्टोनिया दीज थ्री आर्टर कॉल एस बाल्टिक कंट्री दीज थ्री आर्टर कॉल एस बाल्टिक कंट्री एस्टोनिया लाथ्रिया एंड लिथुवेनिया डू दे हेव दउंड्रीज ऑफ रशिया ठीक है ना एक बार लुक इन टू दम वन ठीक है then poland and finland poland and finland right so this is with respect to your baltic sea next north sea how many of you have seen any video of north sea right if you look at it one peculiar trend will happen that say if this is the shore or this is what is your north sea which is existing there will not be any water action here but because of some change in the galactic movement what happens is sometime in the year suddenly from nowhere you start having wave action this side you start having wave action this side ek bar dekh lena yaar kuch acha sa interesting documentary hai uske upar please look into north sea documentary right it is a little interesting fact right dekh lena theek hai so when look at this north sea which all countries are there one is uk then france then belgium right uk france belgium netherlands germany denmark norway sweden right hmm UK, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Right? If you want some mnemonic, ah, NSG Fund BD. BD will be good to take. 
right? NSG ha is having fun with BD. Achiya. What is BD? Ah, biodiversity. Okay, very good. Bio data. Okay. Ah, big data. Okay. Right. See, flow la ona raha hai mere andar. Very good. Right. So, what is that? NSG fun. BD. Usme to countries dekh lena jo. I just dictated those countries. Okay. Next. Mediterranean. Now, Mediterranean, will you remember all the countries? No, no, you should remember. No? Either a country miss I put. Right? No good to bet Kokum for Tomala. Either a miss I put the Napolo. Always play on exceptions. One exception that UPSC often plays in the context of Mediterranean Sea is it plays on Jordan. It plays on Jordan. It asks you to find out which whether Jordan is having a boundary with or it is going to share a, a coast with Mediterranean Sea or not. No. Jordan is a landlocked country. Jordan is a landlocked country. There is no connection with respect to Mediterranean Sea. And whenever you see any question that is coming in your UPSC, it is playing on Jordan. They say which of the following countries are bordering Mediterranean Sea and in that definitely Jordan will be there. If you remove Jordan, you will arrive at the answer. Right? I think twice it was asked so far. If I am not wrong, directly it was asked once in 2018. Right? So, in that context, play on Jordan. No, sir, I still want to remember some countries then remember West Asian countries. Remember those West Asian countries? What are those West Asian countries? The mnemonic that I would say is list metal. List is your West Asian countries. L is what? Libya and Lebanon. Libya is in Asia. Yes. We have some of the strong leaders from Libya. Right? Walu Manal Nochi Kotel Haga Cheik and Dai Ches. That's why I told no. After listening to so many blunders, we thought of these sessions. Right? Otherwise, what? That's what I'm telling you. Afghanistan will be in Australia, I'm telling you. And if I ask you what is the captain of Australia? What is the capital of Australia? Run, run. Lebanon. I is Israel. S is Syria. Lebanon, Israel, Syria. T is Turkey. What is the speciality of Turkey? Huh? What is the speciality of Turkey? Ah, uh, it's a connecting country between Asia and Europe. One, we see one peculiar plateau that is existing called as Anatolian plateau, and one peculiar kind of geophysical phenomena that happens in that particular region is transform boundary interactions. We see different kinds of boundary interactions that generally happen in this context. We see either it is converging, diverging, or transform. In the context of Turkey region, we have a transform boundary interaction that happens. And because of this transform boundary interaction, what happens is we see that this Anatolian plateau or this particular region is highly prone for earthquakes. These are highly prone for earthquakes and the fundamental reason is transform boundary interaction. Right? Remember that I think last year we had, had that earthquake. What was that operation called as? Operation Dost. Operation Dost. Right? Ah. Then if you look at metal. These are North African region countries. These are North African region countries. M is Morocco. M is Morocco. E is Egypt. T. Tunisia. Tunisia. Jasmine Revolution. Tunisia. A. Algeria. And L. Libya. L. Libya. So Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria and Libya. Now, if you want to remember European countries, right, Ratranta Kuchwan Chudan, still you will not be able to find it. Right, so it is no point for you to remember these countries. Chumma, remember these. Indalo Lake Pote Ledu. Unte Undi. Ante. Right. If they ask you about European countries, then it is out of syllabus. Very simple. 
पॉइंटलेस टू रिमेम्बर माइडियर रिमेम्बर दो थिंग्स ठीक है नेक्स्ट इसमें सम चुटकू चुटकू सा सी सर दे देख लेना सब मेडिटेरेनियन सी के साथ मिल रहे राइट एक तो एजियन सी एजियन सी विल डिस्कस दीज दीज डिफरेंट चुटकू चुटकू सीज मैन आई एम टीचिंग यू स्टेट राइट स्टेट ऑफ बोनिफेशियो राइट स्टेट ऑफ बॉस्फोरस राइट वी विल सी डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ स्टेट विच आर एग्जिस्टिंग ठीक है एजियन सी आयोनियन सी अड्राइटिक सी Tyrrhenian Sea, right? Sea of Sardinia. Remember this, chutku chutku. Sea of Sicily, Sea of Sicily. Aajkal honeymoon spot chal rahe hain. Sicily, Sea of Sicily mein bahut log ja rahe hain, right? Plan. Sadhu koi nahi first two. Plan anga nahi and blush chakri. No matter, right? Ah, so Sea of Sicily. All of these are where? Mediterranean. What is the speciality of Mediterranean? We see that we have something called as Mediterranean climate, which is existing. And when you talk about this Mediterranean climate that is existing, you have to understand Mediterranean climate is a climate which is not only based around Mediterranean Sea. One aspect. The second thing that you need to understand in the context of Mediterranean climate is this is the special dimension that is present among all the other eleven world climates. These have dry summers and wet winters. and the fundamental reason why we have this peculiar phenomena in the context of mediterranean sea with respect to this or mediterranean climate with respect to dry summers and wet winters it is purely because of shifting of pressure belts when we have the shifting of the pressure belts phenomena occurring we see the shifting impact of westerlies we see the shifting impact of the westerlies and because of the shifting impact of the westerlies we see this variation of dry summers and wet winters that is one direction that you need to understand then apart from that when you talk about this mediterranean climate another speciality that is existing in the context of mediterranean climates we see a vegetation by name sclerophylls we see a vegetation by name sclerophylls we see that these sclerophylls are present nowhere else in the world except in the mediterranean climate region these are present only in the mediterranean mediterranean region or mediterranean climate and these are what are called as sclerophylls sclerophylls then apart from that when you talk about another very important aspect of mediterranean climate these are water called as the vineyards of the world these are water called as the vineyards of the world which are known for the production of citrus which are known for the production of citrus right remember this much right because viticulture is very very prominent in this context of mediterranean climate viticulture is prominent right so once you understand this dimension i think we'll move to the next one and what is the impact of mediterranean sea in the context of india western disturbances we see we have subtropical westerly jet stream moving over this and you see because of the presence of the himalayan structure we see divergence of the subtropical westerly jet stream into two branches one is the northern branch the other one is southern branch and the corresponding impact is seen in the context of western disturbances where we see the reason why we consider it as a disturbance is we see because of the unseasonal rains which are present in the winters that is what is one small relation that is existing theek hai ha next aajkal bahut bombing chal rahi hai रेड सी राइट दिवाली चल रही है यार पता नहीं कमटी विल कम टेक ए ड्रोन गॉन राइट एम अंटे कुछ चल रहे बहुत चल रहे राइट सो रेड सी वेरी मॉर्निंग दैट वी सी फॉर रेड सी इज वाई सीड्स वाई सीड्स व्हाट इज वाई यमन एस सऊदी ई इजिप्ट Other e, Eritrea, D, ah, Djibouti or Djibouti, ah, Djib, Djibouti, right, Djibouti, then S, Sudan. You you are here Somalia, no? All all are not there, ain't they? Ah, at Somalia, me, what's going on? Cross cult, cross cult culture. You know what? Cross cult culture. What's going on? You know? right people are starving to death especially in the regions of somalia in the regions of nigeria right in the name of the jesus people are starving to death for liberation cross cult culture chal raha hai bahut theek hai right bahut chal raha hai yaar africa mein right aise kuch religious ke bare mein chal raha hai china is also doing lot of things china is conducting culture camps because you see the median age of china is around 39 years now Now they are anticipated to get old, 
when they are getting old they want labor when they want labor what do they do they are they are training the african people to turn into labor and what are they fundamentally teaching them the shaolin techniques the shaolin monks shaolin techniques you would have seen no shaolin monks dekha nahi kya right ha theek hai manaki inta kashtam kada so this is what why seats now you know that ethiopia is a landlocked country or not ethiopia is a landlocked country ethiopia is a landlocked country and what is there in the horn of africa a horn of africa we have seed countries what are those seed s is what somalia or sudan or what somalia e eritrea other e ethiopia d ah djibouti right horn of africa tappu pettakanda ya kontha mandi mana group 2 lo adigaru anukuntaru అడగలేదా గ్రూప్ టూలో ఎక్కడ అడిగారు ఏదో టెస్ట్ లో అడిగారు ఓకే అచ్చా హెచ్ఆర్ టెస్ట్ అనుకోండి నాట్ అన్ ఇష్యూ ఠీక్ ఏ కొంతమంది తప్పు పెట్టారు అది నెక్స్ట్ ఆర్ ఫేవరెట్ సౌత్ చైనా సీ రైట్ సౌత్ చైనా సీ ఇన్ దిస్ కాంటెక్స్ట్ ఆఫ్ సౌత్ చైనా సీ విసి సిక్స్ కంట్రీస్ ఆర్ ఫండమెంటలీ క్లెయిమింగ్ ఇట్ వన్ ఇస్ ఆబ్వియస్లీ పేర్లు ఉంది కదా చైనా రైట్ then vietnam malaysia brunei philippines taiwan the major conflict is with respect to eez exclusive economic zones and we see number of islands are existing here one is parcel islands partly islands karaboro shoal right then we have one island which is present somewhere here called as natula island natula island that is present there which is somewhere near your malaysia and you also need to understand that indonesia and singapore also share some aspects with respect to south china sea it is not only it is not that they are not claiming for a territory i mean the claiming for territoriality in the context of south china sea but if you ask which of the following countries are bordering south china sea please include indonesia as well as singapore Indonesia, Singapore, China, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Philippines and Taiwan all of these are bordering South China Sea but who are fighting for South China Sea six right only six right here somewhere we have near Philippines we have something called as Winston Reef near Philippines we have something called as Winston Reef right it is one of those coral reefs and you also know that Philippines happens to be one of the countries of coral triangle we have one particular region called as coral triangle which is present and we see philippines happens to be one of those countries of coral triangles and in that context we see number of reefs are present around philippines right so one aspect of this then next east china sea i think aha uh -huh. east china sea now in the context of east china sea just observe that it is present with respect to china north korea south korea and japan right here we have raiku islands right and what is connecting your east china sea with south china sea the taiwan strait taiwan strait connects east china sea with south china sea taiwan strait connects is east china sea with south china sea that is what is one condition that you need to understand here right then hmm. i think now we are getting into straits Now, what is the difference between Strait Bay Gulf? Which difference is na? 2022 में क्वेश्चन पूछा था लोग, right? Strait, it connects two water bodies, right? Isthmus, two land masses. Isthmus, it connects two land masses. Then Gulf versus Bay. This is narrow. this is broad this is more broad right whereas gulf is more narrow if you talk about gulf of mannar persian gulf those are narrow right if you look at bay bay of bengal right bay of biscay bay of fundi what is the speciality of bay of fundi what is the speciality it is a region which is known for highest tides for example there is a region called as nova scotia there is a region called nova scotia near bay of fundi and that is known for the tides with highest ranges tides with highest ranges right 
That is one small thing that you need to understand. Now let's look at these different states that are present. Now this is state of Gibraltar. State of Gibraltar. It is between Europe and Africa. It is between Europe and Africa. Please keep writing something. I am dictating, I am dictating. Please write. Between Europe and Africa. It separates Spain and Morocco. It separates Spain and Morocco. It connects Mediterranean Sea with Atlantic Sea. It connects Mediterranean Sea with Atlantic Sea. Right? So that is the speciality of state of Gibraltar. Then Bosphorus Strait, Bosphorus, PH or PO, anything, anything of your convenience, Bosphorus Strait. It is between Aegean Sea and Black Sea. It is between Aegean Sea and Black Sea. Huh? Write down, my dear, I will tell you. Relax. Right? Please write. Aegean Sea and Black Sea, that is Bosphorus Strait, a strait of Dardanelles or Dardanelles Strait, it separates Europe and Asian Turkey, Dardanelles Strait separates Europe and Asian Turkey, right, so that is Dardanelles. Then we also have something called a Strait of Otranto. Strait of Otranto. Strait of Otranto. It is between Ionian Sea and Adriatic Sea. It is between Ionian Sea and Adriatic Sea. And it separates. It separates Italy and Albania. It separates Italy and Albania. Italy and Albania. Next, Strait of Bonifacio. Strait of Bonifacio. Strait of Bonifacio. It is between Tyrrhenian Sea. It is between Tyrrhenian Sea and Western Mediterranean Sea and Western Mediterranean Sea. Right? So, this is state of Bonifacio. Okay. Now, I want you to do one thing when you go back. Please arrange all of these states in East to West orientation. I want you to arrange all of these states in East to West orientation because all of them are clustered where in Mediterranean region. So, please keep them from west to east and coming to that Sea of Marmara, please understand when an examiner is asking a question, examiner does not see Sea of Marmara. If it comes to a microscopic studies, then Sea of Marmara can be considered, but otherwise Sea of Marmara is not considered there. We see Aegean Sea and they consider Sea of Marmara as part of Aegean. In case if they want to go for specifications, which generally examiner does not do that, okay, right? that was the consideration why I had neglected that Sea of Marmara. Okay. Right? So, what you are supposed to do once you go back? East to West arrange them. Right? Next. Hormuz, state of Hormuz and the Babel Mandab. When you look at state of Hormuz, it connects Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman. It connects Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman. Right? The Persian Gulf countries are what? Skewbok I square. The Persian Gulf countries are Skewbok I square. What is Skewbok? Yes. Saudi, Qatar, UAE, Bahrain, Oman, Kuwait, I square, Iran and Iraq. Right? 
Persian Gulf minus I square is equals to GCC. Persians, Persian Gulf minus I square is equals to GCC. That means when you exclude Iran and Iraq from Persian Gulf, we get Gulf Cooperation Council. Gulf Cooperation Council, we get that GCC that is with respect to when you take out Iran and Iraq from Persian Gulf, I am going to get GCC. Right? Persian Gulf will have Iran and Iraq, but Gulf Cooperation Council will not have Iran and Iraq. Does it have Pakistan? And the scene lays. Please be very clear. Right? Next. Babel Mandap Street. Babel Mandap. Babel Mandap. It is between Yemen and Djibouti. It is between Yemen and Djibouti. Right? Next, Gulf of Aden. Gulf of Aden. It joins what? Red Sea with Arabian Sea. Red Sea with Arabian Sea. Gulf of Aden is fundamentally joining Red Sea with Arabian Sea. Right? Write down that. Next. Hmm. Strait of Malacca. Strait of Malacca. It connects Java Sea and Andaman Sea. It connects Java Sea and Andaman Sea. It is between Malaysia and Singapore. It is between Malaysia and Singapore. That is straight of Malacca. Now observe Gulf of Thailand here. Why are we discussing about this Gulf of Thailand? Why Thailand was in news recently? Myanmar? No. Huh? Exercises of Navy to Harsal Chal Tayar. Huh? Isthmus. Huh? Alternative? To Thailand. Acha. Any other? China to Yen Tayar. China. Ah. Right down, right down. Kunisar Lehman Pissachal. For a partner, yes, and one pitch. Sometimes you make me regret so much. But it's okay. Not an issue. Gulf of Thailand, kya kya country size mein? Definitely you need. Thailand will be there. Cambodia will be there. Vietnam will be there. And some aspects of Malaysia. Some aspects of Malaysia. Right? Niche. Extinction. Right? But otherwise, majorly it is these three countries. That is Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam. Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam. Okay. Next. Ah, Park Strait. Right. Park Strait. Now that is between India and Sri Lanka. Now look at the arrangement. Gulf of Manar, then Park Bay, then Park Street. If I have to come from north to south, which is the northernmost, I see Park Street, then followed by Park Bay, then followed by Gulf of Manar. Right? Some of the state public service commissions asked these arrangements. Generally, when I was going through Bihar Public Service Commission, that I could find these tendencies were there with respect to this. So we never know. That when it could be asked in Bihar, definitely in AP. I am not comparing both of them, please. Right? Or definitely in Telangana per se. Right? So that is what is one condition. Okay. So Park Strait, Park Bay and, and Gulf of Manar. Next, Korean Strait. Korean Strait. Right down. It is be between East China Sea and Sea of Japan. It is between East China Sea and Sea of Japan. 
that is Korean Strait. Next, Taiwan Strait. It is between Taiwan and China. It is between Taiwan and China. It connects East China Sea with South China Sea. It connects East China Sea with South China Sea. It is also called as, it is also called as Strait of Formosa, not Samosa, Strait of Formosa. Next. Sunda Strait, Sunda, between Indian Ocean and Java Sea. Both are Sunda Strait and Lombok Strait, Strait of Lombok, Lombok Strait. Both are between Java Sea and Indian Ocean. Both are between Java Sea and Indian Ocean. Now, if I have to arrange these states, that is Strait of Malacca, right, Strait of Sunda, Strait of Lombok, if I have to arrange them from west to east, the order is Malacca, then Sunda, then Lombok, then Makassar. Strait of Makassar, you have somewhere here. Somewhere this is your Strait of Makassar. Where is your Malacca? Somewhere here. This is Strait of Malacca, this is Strait of Sunda, this is Strait of Lombok, and this is Strait of Makassar. This is Strait of Makassar, right? Next. Now, Strait of Makassar. Right down. State of Makassar joins Celebs Sea and Java Sea. Joins Celebs Sea and Java Sea. Right. So, what all did we cover today? A quick recap. Right. We have done some things of latitudes and longitudes we have done something on cyclones we have done something with respect to deserts grasslands then water bodies and straits tomorrow majorly we are going to cover physiographic aspects physiographic aspects in the context of world as well as India and some regions of importance, some regions of importance, right? Especially in the context of if you look at your Gaza Strip, right? That but West Bank, those regions. Then if you look at some regions of Russia, Ukraine, if you look at some regions of South America, if you look at some regions of Africa, where we see generally these days Africa is known for coup, coup, children, right? So, those dimensions we will look into, if time permits, if time permits, we will look into international organizations. But if it is not happening tomorrow, then definitely international organizations will be dealt on third day, right? Because definitely you have at least one question coming from international organizations. Once I deal with international organizations, on the third day, I would be dealing some aspects of environment right i will be dealing some aspects of environment especially some of the national parks tiger reserves biosphere reserves right and some important aspects of wetlands right anybody you know right do you think so the list and the photo not feel you already have 80 we look at some important aspects of these wetlands otherwise we will not look into each of those ramsar sites not possible okay so we look at that dimension and one dimension that we will either come or cover tomorrow or day after would be minerals, especially in the context of global aspects as well as Indian aspects. And don't expect me to teach you all minerals. I will teach you top five minerals which are very important for this year. For this year, which are important, five minerals we will look into those five. Definitely in that uranium is there. Definitely in that uranium is there. We will look at those five minerals and drainage system. 
that is your rivers that is your rivers in those rivers don't expect me to teach you all of the tributaries i would fundamentally give you those basic exceptions which are to be seen okay now for you to get access to this ppt this is one telegram channel which you have to type it in caps you type it in caps you get access to that and there is one more place where you can get access to this right type it in caps right type it in caps you would get that okay so we are going to meet tomorrow tomorrow again the modus operandi will be very same that we'll discuss some static then get into mapping day after also we'll static and get into mapping right is this fine learning something good or bad na munde em anuptare we'll meet tomorrow my dear thank you